it yet. Remember, we're YouTubers now. <laughs> we are YouTubing. Okay. How long has it been since this car started? Probably a year. No. Yeah. It blew the radiator out way way after that. It was like maybe July. A year. Six months. <laughs> well, no, we had it idling in the parking lot because it hasn't been ran. It hadn't been ran in a while, just like right now. And the side of the radiator blew out. And when it blew out the side of the rad, it just put all the coolant right into the intake. Oh God! Sucked it straight into the intake. And I'm like, keep it revving, like, and I jammed this piece of cardboard in there so that it would not let the water sit in the motor. It would try to blow it out. Like, obviously not flooring it, but just keeping it alive. And it's fine. It's good. Unless it's dead right now. Is this the moment of truth? Well, it just, no, it's going to start. <laughs> we know that there's not a problem any, with the motor. So this is Chelsea's car, her drift car. She built before I let her start using the S550. If this starts, it's amazing. <laughs> Nineties BMW power, dude. Just rev the car. <laughs> so dirty. Gross. So gross. Today we're working on this car and sharing this project and just so dirty. It's been sitting on our lift outside through two hurricanes. I mean, it's covered, but... Our. Mine. That's hers. My lift. I think I own the lift. You own the lift in the garage. Sure. This is E36 drift car that we started building two years ago. And almost three, maybe? Three. 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 It's kind of been a back burner project. She's, like, not super motivated to drive. It hasn't been. But now she's, like, I drove the S550 a few times. I want to drive my own car. I want to be able to have this car set up. So she found this Techno Violet M345. It which, found me. It found you, actually. It found me. And uh, it's kind of beat up, but overall pretty straight and true. And it's a true M345. Oh, no, it wasn't a five speed. No. It was auto. We swapped it. Today, we're doing the whole cooling system. So like with E36 stuff, got to run a Stewart water pump. These flow a ton more and keep your car cool. This is like legitimately probably 15 degrees worth of cooling. Euro clutch fan. This brace all the way around means it can hit a bunch of stuff and it will smoothly just wear through it instead of catching and exploding. So we run these. Aluminum water neck. Most of this stuff's from FCP Euro, so that's pretty good too. Mala, uh, oil filter, NGK plugs. We just run the stock ones, stock gap, BKR 6Es low temp thermostat and a new clutch for the clutch van and for these i run e34 5 series because the spacing is a little bit better it keeps it a tick closer to the motor and not the radiator and it locks up at a lower rpm so it sounds like a diesel truck going down the road blowing a ton of air it's so loud but you can see the offset and it. it's a little bit different <clears throat> keeps it closer to the motor because we're on this big z3m aluminum radiator i just buy these um, straight off eBay. They're really cheap. They're like 170 bucks. Super large, thick three row core. Um, and they're for Z3M. So when they're available, which they're not available all the time, they're usually out of stock. Secrets. You can buy them. All secrets. Yeah. And they, they work really, really well and they're cheap. They outlive the crashing of the car usually because something hits a radiator and trashes it anyway. So you might as well we buy one that's affordable kind of deal. At the school, we had so many people hitting cones and they were survive yeah they survive or they'd break and it's nice for me to offer them like a radiator option that's like oh i'll charge you 250 dollars for this because it's 180 dollars plus 70 bucks like of labor on our sheet instead of buying like a really nice griffin or ron davis for 900 bucks and have to charge them a thousand dollars for every time they hit a radiator but yeah this helps with the clutch fan to keep offset and we run the clutch fan because it's the only way to keep these cars cool like when you're hot lapping and beating the crap out of them if you have an e-fan set up on these and your car doesn't overheat you're not driving it hard enough that's the only only way so we're going to tear all this old cooling system out like i said when we were pulling the car off the side of the rad blew out and filled the whole motor with water great <laughs> so we're gonna replace all that we have everything besides coolant tank because maybe i robbed hers or we left it in washington or something so i am gonna put it back together with this until we get the other one just so that we can proof the system and make sure it's good and then we'll swap that out afterwards you ready yep all right pull the intake off pull this off pull this off tell her what to do <laughs> that was doing 
<laughs> doing a great job already. Wow. That's crusty. How are you going to yes. keep your alternator cool ah. now? It's going to overheat the alternator. <laughs> hey, don't worry, that clutch fan is going to throw enough air back there. That's going to be fine. No, they do that because of the clutch fan, I think, because the clutch fan blows all the heat right onto the alternator. So they have like a cool air scoop that goes right here <laughs> to keep it cool. Later BMWs put the alternator bolted to the block and had coolant running through it. So you'd have a passage of coolant coming out of the block to cool your alternator. Like, that is some German engineering it's shit, It's so dude. stupid. It's not even anywhere near the header or anything. Nope. I don't. All I have is an E. He's double really good as a tray to hold all your bolts once you're done, too. You pull this off and just set it on the ground and just put all the bolts on there. Dang, all the factory clips are on this thing still. She's been a good girl, dude. Low wow, miles. Wow, dude. Wow. Should have made that bet with you about this, the miles. Yeah, you should have. I thought this thing had like 300,000 miles because it runs like it does. But. <laughs> Jeez. You're such an asshole. It probably and has. she doesn't run to be very fair, often. To be fair, this car probably hasn't had an oil change in five years and at least 10,000 miles. The oil is so gross in it, unless we changed it already. I don't think we did. We might have. Oh. No, it's really old and dirty. Okay. Smell that. Mm -hmm, oh, good. God. No. Smell it. Mm -mm, no. Smell <laughs> it. I don't want to. <laughs> it's really gross. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, it smells like, like metal. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Thanks. When they turn this color, you Game have to over. replace it immediately. This is literally RTE, not RTR, ready to explode. Same TDH. Dude, I've never seen one make it be that green and not split into pieces. You see the little like lighter colored piece here? That's the braces inside of it. So it's been expanding so much that <laughs> love that. We are never getting that back through there. Yeah, Not we a are. chance. Yeah, we are. Glitter water is a little scary. Because glitter, glitter water, it means somebody put... This is like where it leaked out. So it either means the water pump is eating the housing, which we're going to get to look at in a second. Ooh. Or somebody put head gasket repair stuff in here. Gross. Let her eat, dude. So many of you asked about the 318 Ti, so I figured I'd show you guys what was going on with that. So for a little while, I kept throwing belts and I couldn't figure out why. And we found out that the tensioner, which is the three bolt piece that goes to the oil filter housing, was flexing and it broke two of the bolts. So only one bolt was holding the tensioner on. Mind you, I rev this to like 8,900-ish. <laughs> so even though visibly it all looks straight and like we put a ruler on it, under high load and high torque, it was pulling it away. So we put a whole new system on it. Uh, I hit up FCP and they got me a tensioner, the actual hydraulic piece, the belt, the bolts. They sell a kit that does like basically, like, clearly this probably happens. <laughs> or BMW, people just want to replace everything. But I replaced everything and it was great. And I drove it up the road and then I got a misfire and I couldn't figure out why. I opened the hood and my igniter, which was, it's like AAM igniter. I don't know if you can see up in here but one has lettering on it, one is mostly gone. That's because this was on fire. Um, so the igniter failed and it back fed into the ECU. It didn't fry anything in the ECU because I swapped them around. It seems to run fine. This car is pretty much ready once I get the igniter, to get put back together and just be checked on. And then it's good to shred again. We'll have to go drive it. So I'm pretty pumped on that. The Fox body is kind of the same as it's been. I had to put a new tail light on it. And when I put the new tail light on, I realized I also moved the quarter panel a little bit with the hit. So mm -hmm. that sucked. We also took it out to the track and tested it again. And we could not replicate the problem that we were having at LZs. So refixing the basically fuel map and changing it and trying to kind of tricking the ECU into thinking that it was at less pressure than it actually is by scaling it makes it so that it doesn't have as big of a window and it's been seems to be running fine. Hopefully, Link comes out with their new ECU soon, which is supposed to be very, very soon, and that will solve all of those problems and we'll be able to turn the power up. Also, the turbo manifold just got finished up, investment cast style, so we're gonna have that to put on there to put the G30 770 on it and hopefully turn the power up. Again, I don't want a ton of power, but we're just trying to make something that can make more power up top and hopefully push like five, well, 480 to 500 wheel, which is 
more than that car really ever needs, um, especially because most of the events we're gonna drive this year are small tire events, which is why we built that car. FBRX7, we're not gonna really talk too much about that. This is a little project that I've always wanted to build and I found one really cheap and it's super, super nice. I just, I know you probably saw it in the background, you're gonna ask questions. My Z3M up there that just got painted and stuff has just been hanging out because I have no time to fix it. But that's pretty much what's going on with the cars you guys know about. So unmolested. Crazy. Okay, I'm gonna get you to What's do a service that. For? Nothing. No, I, when you were walking up, I said if I were the female version of myself, where would I put this? Hose? Anyways, <laughs> this one and this one. So okay. remove both of those. Ooh. No gloves. Going in raw. I'll be your bolt holder for right now. I can't see those. You're in luck. Oh. Ooh, my coolant smells so good. British Racing Green Nails. You need Techno Nails now. You saw the Corolla and she's like, I like that color. And I said, you're getting old. That's how you know you're aging <laughs> like fine wine. Yeah. There you go. Well, Thermostat. Pull that Johnny too. Oh, it smells so gross. That's what I said. I just got, I just got it. Yummy. Gross. Dude, <laughs> this is the OEM thermostat. Because nobody actually buys OEM thermostats to put back in there. That's scary. <laughs> or it's also good, I guess. It's like the perfect pool temperature. I'm trying to get all the growing stuff in there. Oh, nice. It's like goopy. Ew. Yeah. Now it's just all over this instead. this. Can I hire you as my crew chief? I'll be a crew chief all day as long as I'm not a mechanic. Oh no, that's, I don't, I don't have money for both, so you're all of it. We get to find out now if that metal problem is the, the water glitter. Yeah. Crusty boy. That's really gross. That's really, really not gross. going anywhere it's supposed to go right now. Nice. Plastic too, so that's not the problem. Hmm. That's why we run these. Obviously, the, there's lots of metal options, but the stock one allows this whole area to become like a cavitation area. The Stewart one has what appears to be smaller blades, but it directs all the water straight into the housing. So rather than it just being like up oh, and then getting pushed out of a hole that's this big, like like that. This matches the actual port in the head. This just is so much more efficient, especially at high RPMs. Uh, when you go to a casino, they give you like a billion dollar tokens. That's what this is right here. Ooh, OEM oil packs. So when you do coil packs on these, try to keep them in the same. Ooh, 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 get it out of there. Pick it up, get it out of there. Just get it out of there. Just get it out of there. Get, no, oh, I'm, I can't move both and. Take the whole coil pack out of there. Do you want me to wipe so it So your valve cover gasket's trashed in that cylinder. Well, well, well. It doesn't be like that. That's pretty easy though. Yeah. <laughs> Add that to your list. Let's see what these plugs look like. They're Bosch. <laughs> Dude, look at this. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is how you know it's been ran for a long time. You can see this piece right here? It's supposed to be completely cylindrical. It's tapered back so far from the strap going to the diode across it and wearing the metal away. I don't know if these are the original plugs, but... <laughs> that's really bad. So this one's gonna be covered and stuff. <laughs> That one looks really good. Well, that's just because I put all that stuff in there. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. This is pretty common though, because the E36 valve cover, it either cracks or the O-ring is bad. I can literally see the O-ring. Somebody didn't seat it right when they did the valve cover mm. job. <sighs> Number five is normally the worst one. 
It looks similar though. Yeah, we only just cranked it over because I put a bunch of oil down in the one spark plug that was questionable. And one had an oil leak into it, so we wanted to blow all that out of the cylinder before we compression test it. Should be a guy to buy right here. That's not good. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know if I tighten this all the way. That's not great. If they're all like that though, it's fine. It's just a gauge. I just bought this gauge. Okay, so 130, 145. <laughs> okay, one and three are not, not very bad ones. Okay. These are all even. I'm gonna go back and check those other ones with the throttle body open. Because yeah, the idle air sure. motor will do weird stuff in this car. The cylinder is probably lined with a little bit of rust, or the head might have some crud in there from it sitting. It's only ever been like idled and ran over the last like three years. Okay, so all these are within five. We're gonna go back to one real quick. It's weird. So these motors typically pull a lot more compression than this, but when we did the SR, it was really low too. So I wonder if this gauge just reads really low. Like typically M3s will read like 200 to 210, but when it's even yeah. across the board. Okay, go ahead. Let's throw plugs in this thing and then drain the oil. If, yeah, it's just low, like across the board, but your SR only read 125, but it was 125 in every single cylinder, so I have pretty low, pretty high, or pretty low concern about that. You think it has the original oil filter in it? I really, really hope not. It looks like the sauce that I dip my sushi in. <laughs> this smells, dude. It stinks, dude. I'm oh, sorry. I got it on my shoe! Can't ever do an oil change without making a mess. It's physically impossible. Now you smell like absolute dog poop oil. Gross. She's ready to blow. What's that thing that rattles in here? What's this? It's a broken piece of plastic. I don't know. Where did it come from? That's where all the water comes shooting in our eyes. Good. I think it was just the beta that was making noise. It's probably like, I have oil now. <laughs> the old oil wouldn't make it there. coolant system that somehow caused it to turn into this stuff. Whatever that is. <laughs> Just 
are coming down now. That was the biggest air bubble I've ever seen in my life. Can't say it's not flush now. <laughs> I went to the I wore the right pants for today. What was in your cooling system? I have no idea. Dude, it was like mud is not the way to like a peanut butter milkshake that was no, really thick. No, but it was like it's textured. Butterfinger. It was like butterfinger well, inside. I got, and it started like foaming and like doing stuff. So like I don't know what was in there ahead of time. But I only use one type of coolant here and it's Shell Universal coolant. So I don't think it was mixing with anything unless there was something going on there. Anyways, I drained the radiator as fast as I could so it would start pulling some out. We fired it so it would push as much out as we could. And then I think when I came out here and we put the hose in it to put water in it, I should have shut it off, filled it, and then done that so it would actually bleed the cooling system right. But I was in such a panic and she's like, oh, it's starting to get warm. And I'm like, duh, there's no real coolant in it. We're putting cool, cold coolant back <laughs> in it right now, so it should be fine. But it created just a really big air bubble. And we worked the air bubble out once I figured out what was going on. I put the bleeding can on there to elevate it, and that really helped. Yeah. And then it stayed middle the whole time. Yep. And how long were you here running this just now? Ten minutes. Revving it? Yep. Doing stuff? Mm -hmm. Seems good. So it must have just been something that was in there. I've never seen it before. Uh, this is absolutely crazy. But... So now the cooling system's done, um, except for the expansion tank. We have to replace that. And that, one, uh, that one's good. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to no, keep it in there. No, we're not doing that. No, you can keep it in there just in the trunk of the car if you got a pack bond with it. A couple things buttoned up. It already has SLR kit, already has VCs, already has a diff, already has clutch flywheel. Most of the stuff's there. So next is handbrake, which we're waiting on the physical handbrake because I stole the ASD one to use on another car. My bad. And then I think you drift it. It will drift be it. driftable if yeah. I can drift it. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think. I think it's going to be a cool build. I love E36s. They're mm -hmm. great. So it's cool to build one that's like a high-end school car. Oh, it's got a full cage in it, too. Yep. I forgot about that. Yep. A nice cage, too. Yep. Sick.